the Korean sweet potato vermicelli. It's just to satisfy your craving for a jjajje. And for jjajje, of course the main ingredient would be the Korean sweet potato vermicelli. This is around 200 grams. I, this is not enough for our family. Um, so I'm gonna get some more there, but I don't think we'll, I'm going to cook the whole 400 grams because that would be too much. And I'll show you later, but I, as you can see, I have onions and garlic here because I'm going to season the spinach as well. So when I blanched, oh, when I blanched the spinach for my gimbap, I also blanched the spinach here for my japchae. And also left some egg for garnishing once I'm done cooking the japchae, which we will put on top. And of course, we'll use also some of the salt. And, oh, this is the sesame oil. I use a local brand that we use here. And, Carrots. Uh, I divided the carrots that I use for gimbap into this so that I'm maximizing the ingredients. Uh, I usually put um, mushroom as well and um, bell pepper or capsicum, but we're not very fond of that, especially with my daughter. So I, I, this is really just the basic version of japchae, and I didn't put. Oh, I'm not putting beef, pork, or anything as well. This is just um, vegetable japchae. And since I don't have meat on my japchae or on the gimbap except for the ham, we're having this for tonight as well, which I got from the grocery, from the local supermarket. So they show you how to cook it. So it's ready to cook mandu, which is what they call for their dumpling. So it's pork and vegetable dumpling. I can choose to fry it or to steam it, but today I'm just going to fry it because it's going to take a little while on me. See, it's it says it's ready in eight minutes. Um, I think you can see in some recipes that it's a bit different. And I cook it a bit differently because I don't have meat. So usually when you have meat, you marinate the meat with some mixture like soy sauce, mirin or whatever you want to include. But this one I don't have so um, I'm going to saute it. I'm going to stir fry them separately like I'm doing now. This is just for the carrots because as I said I don't have a lot of ingredients for this version of japchae. I don't have um, mushroom or other uh, like cucumber or, or was it? Um, Capsicum, so it, it's it's a very basic version of japchae because what I'm, I'm trying to do is cook whatever is in my fridge. And sometimes it's like that, right? You you don't know what to cook, and then sometimes you pray for it, and then you don't have much of the ingredient, and it's fine because as long as you have the taste of it, then you get to satisfy your craving. I'm going to put a bit of salt. Give it just some flavor. I think that's enough. So we're just gonna put it. And hopefully this time I don't throw anything. Okay, just... <gasps> there we go. This is just one this time. So this is the stir fried carrots and since I'm not going to stir fry any other ingredients because I've already um, cooked the egg when I was preparing my um, what should I call this my egg for and I'm using olive oil here but it's the one that is for high heat cooking so I think I mentioned in my last video that I don't normally use olive oil for high heat cooking, but this 
version of olive oil can be used. But I'm going to saute garlic and this is what makes my texture a bit different. Filipino version um, because the original recipe of japchae they need to saute it you stir fry separately all the ingredients and then you mix them together in, in a bowl using your hands and that's okay you just cook the ingredients separately you stir fry them individually and that's it but for me I like the taste of garlic I like the taste of uh, the flavor that sauteing it brings out. So instead of just stir frying onion, I'm going to saute it together with garlic. And if, if my recollection is correct, I don't think that chapche also has garlic. You, you have fresh garlic on your thing. Big size of this because we are going to see how big it is in the back of the And again, the normal uh, recipe would have white onion or yellow onion, but as I said, I'm cooking whatever I have on my pantry. So I don't have um, yellow or white onion at the moment, so I'm using the red onion instead. The flavor would be a bit different, but then it doesn't do any harm, in my opinion. Because this is not the first time that I've cooked chapchae using red onion. As long as you cook it for some time, then that's fine. So as long as you wait for it to be translucent, and I like my onion to be so that we it like um, caramelize and bring out um, flavor and I think we're able to achieve that now okay that's it and as I said it's a bit different than the normal japchae because the normal japchae would have meat and then when you cook the meat and you can put them together and I don't have my meat so after I saute it I put 3 tablespoons of soy sauce so now I think it's fully cooked so I'll put the rest of the ingredients so as I said I'm not gonna do the regular way of cooking japchae but I'm just going to quickly and when I say quickly, it's really going to be just quick to just put them together like this and then put the japchae so I boil the japchae for I think about 5 to 7 minutes I've pre-boiled it so that's why it's hardened like this so the reason why I want to put it in the pan is to heat it up again and to put the rest of the flavors but you just need some see, patience in mixing it together and then the flavor will seep in I've lowered down the heat to super low fire I'm just gonna put some pepper salt. Well, I didn't actually put salt a while ago. I'm gonna put sesame oil because japchae is not japchae without the sesame oil flavor. It adds a very different flavor to the noodles and to the vegetables as well. A bit more, and I think that 
it. I'm going to put this now on the serving plate and garnish it for you all to see. Okay. This is about 300 grams if I'm not mistaken because as I said a while ago, um, one packet is around 200 grams. I have some left over ham. I'm just going to put it nonetheless. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Then I put in some egg garnish. So this is why I'm telling you that I was using the same ingredients for my chepche and my kimbap so that it's easier to cook. So when you have kids and also sometimes it's just boring to eat one kind of food and you don't want it very difficult. I think the preparation here is what's difficult but cooking it all together is very easy. This one took me like maybe 10 minutes to cook. So as you can see, this is our finished product. Product, <laughs> japchae, and this one though is an instant ready to cook dumpling that we bought from the store. And of course, the kimbap. And I've prepared some chili oil and vinegar for the mandu. And now we're gonna have some dinner. So thank you for watching. Till the next video. Bye-bye.